two ways. There is the right and wrong. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, Krimora here. Welcome to episode two of Game Info. Video games are not just there randomly. There are a lot of mathematical theories, there are a lot of scientific theories, physics, so many things that are implemented in there and that we can all learn from. Flum. Great. We can all learn from <laughs> and we can do so in a fun way. So today I wanted to talk about the first element which has always been something intriguing for me besides on video games, which is the butterfly effect. Pay attention, this is Wikipedia stuff. <laughs> Let's start with the basic information. So butterfly effect is something that was stated by Edward Lawrence, the meteorologist. Explained the butterfly effect as being a metaphor that um, explained when small little changes in initial variables can conduct and lead to completely different final results. In his job, when he was doing, you know, weather predictions and things like that, um, he used to just like change certain initial variables to calculate certain weather elements. And um, what, what he noticed was that when he used to do like those small little changes, whether it was like by super small micro numbers, um, it used to create drastic results in the end provision. To give you an example um, about this, and this is something that all my fellow Moroccans know, and it's historical. <laughs> so it would be um, World War One. We all agree that World War One is an event that changed the entire world. If we want to talk, like stop and talk about World War One as an event, as a historical event, we can all debate about different you know, um, causes that led to World War. But if we try like to dig deeper into it, like to the to the process of how World War One started, and we wanted to go to like this small little thing that just like caused it on June 28, 1914, that 19 year old Serbian shot Francis dead led to Austria-Hungary uh, declaring war on Serbia and then followed by all the countries declaring war on each other starting from Austria-Hungary declaring war on Serbia and then all the way to Germany declaring war on Russia and then the whole world just lit on fire literally <laughs> World War One, which is like this huge thing that just like changed the whole world was caused by this small, well I wouldn't call it a small event, but it's relatively smaller than a world war. But if we go now and dig deeper into that small little event, we will find other smaller events that have actually led to it first, and then it led to World War One. This is something that gets affected everywhere, um, even on, my, on financial markets, on crashes, on um, economical difficulties, etc. Quick disclaimer here, the butterfly effect is still in theory. It hasn't really been proven mathematically or scientifically, if I may say. So this just might be all just a rant about something that does not exist. I like actually the sentence that people use to talk about it, which is the flap of a butterfly in a certain region in the world can cause a tornado in the other region of the world. It does summarize it in the perfect way. Another form that is perfectly explaining of this, um, of this theory, which is time traveling. So in sci-fi, time traveling is such a sensitive matter that when someone actually does it, the first line that they're told is to not touch or talk to anyone or do something to alter the past because if they do whether it is just like talking to someone or replacing something with another thing or moving something from its original space that could have a drastic effect on the future going back to video games yes you're still on a video gaming uh youtube channel yeah <laughs> bear in mind that in video games yes i know Everything is pre-written, all the storyline is pre-written, all endings are pre-written, so you don't really create something. But to appreciate the beauty of the theory, as well as the beauty of video games, we will disregard the fact that it's all predictable. <laughs> cool. So let me give you a small little example. In a video game, you have two um, trails. 
There is the right one and there is the left one. The game is indirectly asking you to pick one. You're in first or third person, you're looking right there, that, that's like the first, for me, that's like the first reflex. I'm like looking at the end, if I can see it, I'm looking at the end of it and I'm like, that's clear. And I'm looking there and I'm like, that's not clear. It has a giant creature at the end of it. I'm not going there, you know? So it's a lot more rational of a decision that you make. But if we go like, for example, to make a random choice, which is basically how video games handle butterfly effect. So it's like giving the player multiple, uh, two or multiple choices to pick from without knowing the consequences of each choice. Those choices later on affect whether it is the succession of the story or the final ending of the story or you die a miserable death. So what do we call this? It's called narrative decision-based gameplay. The player is giving the choice between multiple elements or actions or words sometimes to say and those choices later on branch out into more choices to make and then giving you more and more uh, scenarios, you know, to explore in a certain game. You don't really think and rationalize each choice, you just choose based on you, yourself, as a person and not just your character. It's as if you are in that character. During that time and in that particular location, if you had to pick one of these two, what would you pick? So if you, for example, see certain games like um, Until Dawn. So Until Dawn is a horror uh, PS4 game that came out and that the story is built based on the choices that you make. There has been a lot of debate on this. Some people said that that's not the butterfly effect, uh, that that's complete bullshit. But let's go to the technical part of it. Now, it has given you multiple choices to make check during the gameplay what's really cool and what i thought was cool is that when you see those totems it shows you certain um uh, results and then depending on your choice if you get that result certain games are more discreet than others in this playing this whole uh decision making gameplay to not upset the people who don't like it to be called the butterfly effect let's say for example uh the walking dead so the walking dead uh, you make certain decisions, you say certain things to certain NPCs or do certain things to them to either befriend them or to actually push them away from you and just like get rid of them in, um, in your, you know, your story. And so that affects how you survive throughout the story and throughout the game. And so you have to be like really smart who you want to stay with, who is going to be more beneficial for you, etc. But the catch here is that the choice has to be made uh, in a limited time because that way they guarantee that you will be making that choice out of reflex and not out of um, you know how you're going to beat the game but as to how you if you were in that specific position how you would react another game actually that I would like to talk about which is life is strange which is an indie game and there it's a lot more personal it's like you're you reflect in that in that person you're playing with in the character. You put yourself in the shoes of the character in that particular story, in that moment, in that time, and then in that location and make that choice. Other games are less uh, discreet about it. In certain games, uh, the choices are highlighted in uh, a certain color, for example, red, green, blue, uh, yellow, etc. The game that has that is Mass Effect. So Mass Effect, there are like four actions and each action is like a, in a color and so that like says off the bat like here you have four decisions if you pick blue for example and you have to like go through this there is although one game that i find is really underrated and uh completely um unmentioned when talking about this kind of narratives and gameplay so it's silent hill shattered memories for those of you who don't know the concept of silent hill shattered memories is one of the silent hills where you don't have weapons you can't attack you just run some creatures come out and start following you and trying to catch you and kill you and then you have to just run away from them so this is like the 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 game the main game sometimes this is cut off shows you sitting with a psychiatrist who just gives you a bunch of tests to determine your personality. It doesn't really affect the game. I mean, when you're running away from those creatures, you're actually running away from them, whether you're, uh, you chose A or B, but it does affect the ending. I, I thought it was, at that time, really, really cool of a concept. It gave the game so much more depth, um, and you actually feel it. You answer as a person, 
regardless of the character. It's like you're not in the place of a character. It's a first person. You're in front of the guy and uh, you're just answering his questions as you, as a person. And so that reflects your direct personality. This is just to summarize uh, and show you how Butterfly Effect is actually implemented in video games when done really well because when you say, when you claim that your story or your game has a decision-based gameplay um, kind of deal, it gives you more attention and at the same time you leave a lot more room for criticism. Players are going to be really harsh on you, <laughs> especially if you say this or you say, or even worse, if you say butterfly effect in the game. Like for example, Until Dawn was really uh, subject of, a, of so many debates, but it's not really like butterfly effecty. So yeah, I know. <laughs> Just the fact that it includes you a lot more and doesn't really impose a certain succession of actions, it's actually a really good deal <laughs> that we should take and be happy about. It does affect the replayability of the game directly uh, and critically, I, I think, in my opinion, because when you finish it and you get a certain ending uh, and you don't like it, We'll just replay the game and make a different choice. Something that is not really offered in a classic normal game. When you don't like the ending, all you have is Reddit or YouTube or something like that where you just say, the ending sucks. I hated it. I spent 60 bucks on that game and it sucked. Now if you don't like it, <laughs> just replay it. Like, make another choice. To make a certain game, if it's really well made, to make a certain game be so many different stories at the same time. And that, as I said, makes the game a lot more interesting, a lot more inclusive of the player, and at the same time, it makes the game a lot more talked about and debatable. So that was my take on the butterfly effect. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Game Info, and um, I hope you guys found it helpful. I hope it helped you a little bit see better uh, the butterfly effect in general, and then the butterfly effect applied to video games. And I hope that if you don't like video games, that video games at least helped you understand the butterfly effect a little bit better. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I will see you next time. Bye bye. Cremora is out. <laughs>